We hope to modify this previously built structure into an inloading wheelchair accessible carriage. It's made of two lengths of box section welded onto two plates that have pivots on their undersides to fit onto commercially made bogies. Having zoomed out again, we can see that the steel box section was welded above the plates to which the bogies are attached. In order to keep the wagon stable, it would be advantageous to lower its centre of gravity by attaching the box section below these plates. Rather than grinding off and redoing the welding already done, we decided to simply turn the whole chassis the other way up. This will allow us to install a slightly different design of bogey pivot in an appropriate position from what will now be the bottom of the chassis. Our early tests showed that when weight was applied on one side of the chassis, as might happen when loading or unloading the carriage, the chassis would lift away like this from the roller bearing on the opposite side of the bogey. These bearings are designed to remain in contact with the chassis at all times to allow the bogey springs to do their job of compensating for undulations in the track and uneven loading of the carriage. We therefore decided to make modified bolt-on bogey pivots. In an ideal world, the thrust washers would have been bronze rather than the brass that we had to hand. You may think that the bolt looks rather small, but it doesn't need to bear any weight and it is made of stainless steel with a high shear strength specification. The function of the bolt is to hold the washer above it in place, ensuring the shoulder of the pivot remains correctly positioned, allowing the suspension to work as it is designed to. With this work completed, we have the confidence to take the chassis for a short test run with Karen seated atop it in her wheelchair. The next stage of the build was to add some cross braces in order to support the deck of the carriage. Research revealed that an 800mm wide deck would accommodate 95% of wheelchairs, so we measured and cut several lengths of 20mm square box section. The angle grinder was used to cut out a 10mm deep channel at each end of these sections so that they would sit at the same height as the existing cross pieces on the chassis. We also added additional bracing under the main 40 by 40 mm box section chassis rails because we found they flexed quite a lot when loaded. With the chassis widened and strengthened, we checked the deck boards would sit correctly in place and added vertical supports for the carriage sides. Pilot holes had been drilled in the uprights before assembly. These needed drilling out to the correct size for the stainless steel self-tapping screws used to fix the wooden sides in place. Once all four sides had been fitted, we were eager to try the deck boards in place in order to get a better idea of what the carriage would look like. We didn't fix them down at this stage, which was fortunate because when we pushed the unloaded carriage along, it derailed. The wheel on the outside of the curve was climbing the rail because the compensating mechanism was not working as it should. A call to CMD Engineering, the manufacturers of the bogies, confirmed that they were designed for heavy duty use. For example, under their carriages that weigh about 125 kilograms. They agreed that reducing the number of springs and or adding weight to the carriage should resolve our problem. We therefore decided to do both, adding concrete blocks to increase the weight and following CMD's instructions on how to remove springs by using a flat-ended screwdriver, pushing it in near the end of the coil and levering it out of its retaining pocket. One of the outer two springs on each side of both bogies was removed in this way. We can now stand on the edge of the carriage without the wheels lifting away from the rails. We may have to review the amount of springing as extra weight is added in the next stage of construction. But we can now be fairly sure that we have the basis of a stable carriage and have gained some useful knowledge about how to ensure we have a properly working suspension. The next stage of construction will be to add the carriage ends that will fold down to form access and exit ramps. This drawing shows how we intend making the ends of the carriage as double folded ramps. 
The idea is that long ramps will allow wheeled vehicles to be easily propelled onto and off the carriage. A kit of parts was cut from 20mm square box section to form the end ramp structure. Short pieces of 40mm round bar with a hole through the centre will form the hinges. Accurately cutting the rounded shapes at the ends of the square bar where required was achieved using a hole saw mounted in the lathe. The top and end of the bar are aligned with the centre of the tailstock, as shown here. With the 40mm hole saw mounted in the chuck, the bar was fed into the saw at a slow feed rate, making sure the cut was kept well lubricated at all times. The basic framework was welded together, and a couple of bars were welded in place to stop the ramp folding when in the open position. We checked that the wooden slats would fit as planned with the ends folded and tested the as yet not bolted together structure with a loaded wheelbarrow. Something will need to be done to smooth out the bump on and off the ramp. We hope to come up with a solution that will allow us to load or unload both pushed and propelled wheeled vehicles of various types anywhere around our track. If that proves impractical, it may be necessary to use our various crossing points for embarking and disembarking, and or build a purpose-built platform as part of developing a station for the railway. Building this carriage is still very much a work in progress. As well as properly bolting together the parts made so far, finalising the spring rates and resolving the bump on and off the ramp, we still need to fit brake gear and fixing down points, as well as design some removable seats. We may yet completely change the design, so keep an eye on our website and check back here to see what progress we make.